Well, praise God, and we thank the Lord for you all joining with us today on our Wednesday night Bible study at Kingdom Life Ministries in Elizabethtown. Amen? Amen? And so we invite you all to just join in with us. We are studying um, the book of Acts, and we're going uh, chapter by chapter, verse by verse, and just doing some great uh, expository on the Word of God. So... Uh, if y'all will just get with us, get your tablets out, get your notes, paper, pens, whatever you need uh, to join in with us today. I am Pastor Ray Romero, Kingdom Life Ministries, here in Elizabethtown, and uh, we're coming to you uh, here via uh, Facebook Live, but we're also live in service today as well. And uh, so just a quick overview. So we've been studying the book of Acts, and the Acts of the Holy Spirit and he is the one that has authored this book of course we know that he uses individuals just like he uses individuals today he uses his people to get his message out he uses his people to do signs wonders and miracles he uses his people to do great exploits for him so the book of Acts is the Acts of the Holy Spirit using the men and women of God. It's also the birth of the church. Uh, the church grows, uh, and we read and we see that, how it begins to expand and goes to different cities and towns and, and just other countries and, and nations uh, that exist at that time. So uh, as we follow through, we'll see how God has used people all through time. Amen? So... Uh, we have uh, stopped in Acts chapter 7, so I'll, just a couple of things real quick. Understand that the letter of Acts, it's a one continual run-on letter, amen? They, they, they broke it down into chapters and verses. We know that, that, that that's not the way that it was created. That's not the way it was written. So we'll go from one story of an individual right into the next part, and we continue on uh, through that. So Acts actually is the book of evidence as well. So evidence meaning that whenever they went out and ministered the word of the Lord, uh, there were several components. One of them was every time they ministered, people were getting saved. Amen? Amen. That's how the church grew. That's how the body grows, even today. Uh, we go out and we minister the word of God, and it grows. The other things that we see is that they always use the word of God. They started in the Old Testament, and they brought it all the way up to Jesus. And they could not, the Pharisees, Sadducees, could not dispute uh, what they were telling them because they knew it. It was the truth. It was in uh, their writings. It was in their scrolls. So they understood that. The other thing that cannot be disputed is that there was always miracles being done. Something was always taking place. Somebody getting healed, devils being cast out, raised from the dead. Uh, we even saw where a couple of believers fell over dead for lying to the Holy Spirit. I mean, to me, that's just a, a great miracle right there. Just for no reason, you're just going to fall over dead, okay? Uh, so even when it doesn't look like a miracle, it's a move of God, amen? So with those three key points there, uh, we're going to go ahead and we'll start in uh, the, uh, chapter 8 of the book of Acts. So. What I'd like for us to do is uh, I'm going to go ahead and just read over uh, chapter 8, and then we're going to turn it over to Pastor Linda. But prior to doing that, I'm going to have Pastor Newsom. He's going to come up, open us up in a word of prayer. I'm going to ask Pastor Cindy if she'd come on up and open us up in a word of prayer, and then uh, we'll get into our Bible study. Amen? Amen. Amen. So glory to God. So pastors, if y'all would come on up. And join, up, join me up here, and uh, let's uh, exhort the people. Let's get people excited. Let's believe God. Uh, while they're coming up, I want you to know that we've been in 40 days of prayer and consecration here in the state of Kentucky, believing that the homicides would drop. And the testimony is in the last week, week and a half, I have not heard of any shooting deaths in the city of Louisville. Personally, I've not heard. I'm not saying nothing happened. I'm just believing that, hey, God is moving in our city and in our state. Amen? Amen. So, Pastor Cindy. Bless the Lord. I will rejoice, for this is the day the Lord has made. 
This is a good day. Amen. Let's go before the Lord. Mm -hmm. Father, we thank you. Mm -hmm. We thank you today for the privilege of being able to gather together and to fellowship in word and in spirit. Mm -hmm. We thank you, Holy Spirit, that you're going to flow. Mm -hmm. That you're going to flow through us, Lord, mm -hmm. and uh, and reveal the, re the revelation of your word to us. Mm -hmm. And we'll gather insights and and knowledge and wisdom from the word of god tonight mm -hmm. we thank you for blessing sister linda as she speaks mm -hmm. and we thank you lord that your anointing will be here the rest of the service in jesus name amen amen praise amen. god thank you glory to god hallelujah in psalms 40 verse 5 says many O lord my god yeah yes. are the wonders mm -hmm. you have done Mm. The things you plan for us, mm -hmm. no one can recount Glory to God. you. Yes. Were I to speak and to tell of them, mm. there will be too many to declare. Wow. That's, that's good. That's God's plan. That's good. Too many to declare. Mm -hmm. So today, in regards to the plan, 40 days of consecration, mm -hmm. so we can see a decree and fatality. Amen. Let us buy our heads. Mm -hmm. O ancient of days, yes. Jesus Christ, you who never change. Father, you are the same yesterday, today, and forever. So today we are pressing through. We are pushing through, Father, because we are changing and because our situation is changing right now. Because the sun will shine tomorrow yes. in whatever circumstances are going in on our life, oh God. So Father, we are praying for the city of Louisville. Yes. Just as we are praying for Elizabeth Town yes. and all the people in it, oh God. As we are praying for the state of Kentucky yes. and the great United States of America yes. and all the countries attached yes. to it, oh God. So, Father, on today, we thank you. We just thank you, God, for giving us the opportunity to come back in your presence yes. to share the word mm -hmm. of God on today. So, Father, I pray for my sister, oh God. My sister Linda is coming to do this great overview, God. Pull more into her, oh God, so that she can have more for your people. So we pray in the name of your son, Jesus Christ, <coughs> and everybody says amen. Amen, amen, amen. Thank you, Pastor. Bless you. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Amen. So, Acts chapter 8, uh, 40 verses. We're going to read through it. The reason why I want to read through it is that we can already have a foundation. A lot of times when people minister the word of God, they pull certain areas out, and uh, and then they preach on that. So a lot of times we don't actually get the opportunity, or we don't take the opportunity, the initiative, to read through the whole chapter itself. So at least today you could say, hey, I read a whole chapter out of the Bible. Amen? Amen. So praise God. So Acts chapter 8, starting in verse 1, and it says this, And Saul was consenting unto his death, and he's talking about Stephen, and at the time, there was a great persecution against the church, which was at Jerusalem. And they're all scattered abroad throughout the regions of Judea and Samaria, except the apostles. And devout men carried Stephen to his burial and made great lamentation over him. As for Saul, he made havoc of the church, entering every house and hailing men and women, committed them to prison. Therefore... They that were scattered abroad went everywhere preaching the word. Then Philip went down to the city of Samaria and preached Christ unto them. The people with one accord gave heed unto those things which Philip spake, hearing and seeing the miracles which he did. For unclean spirits crying with loud voices came out from many that were possessed with them, and many taken with palsies and that were lame were healed. And there was a great joy in the city. But there was a certain man called Simon, which before time in the same city used sorcery and bewitched the people of Samaria, giving out that he himself was some great one, to whom they all gave heed, for the least to the greatest, saying, This man is the great power of God. And to him they had regarded because that of long time he had bewitched them with sorceries. But when they believed Philip preaching the things concerning the kingdom of God and the name of Jesus Christ, they were baptized, both men and women. Then Simon himself believed also. And when he was baptized, he continued with Philip 
and wondered, beholding the miracles and the signs which were done. Now, when the apostles which were at Jerusalem heard that Samaria had received the word of God, they sent unto them Peter and John. And when they were come down and prayed for them, that they might receive the Holy Ghost. And for as of yet he was fallen upon none of them, only they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. Then laid their hands on them, and they received the Holy Ghost. And when Simon saw that through the laying on of, of, of the apostles' hands the Holy Ghost was given, he offered them money, saying, Give me also this power, that on whomsoever I lay my hands he might receive the Holy Ghost. But Peter said unto, unto him, Thy money perish with thee, because thou hast thought that the gift of God may be purchased with money. Thou hast neither part nor lot in this matter, for thy heart is not right in the sight of God. Repent therefore of thy wickedness, and pray God, if perhaps the thought of thine heart may be forgiven thee. For I perceive that thou art in the guile of bitterness and in the bond of iniquity. Then answered Simon and said, Pray ye that the Lord of uh, the Lord for me, that none of these things which you have spoken come upon me. And then they have testified and preached the word of God. For the Lord preach the word of God for the Lord. Return to Jerusalem and preach the gospel in many villages and Samaria. Uh, villages of the Samaritans. And the angel of the Lord spoke unto Philip, saying, Arise and go toward the south unto the way that goeth down from Jerusalem unto Gaza, which is desert. And he arose and he went, and behold, a man of Ethiopia, a eunuch of the great authority under Candace, queen of the Ethiopians, who had the charge of all her treasures and had come to Jerusalem for to worship was returning and sitting in his chariot read Isaiah the prophet. Then the spirit said unto Philip, Go near and join thyself to the chariot. And Philip ran thither to him and heard him read the prophet Isaiah and said, Understand thou what thou readest? And he said, How can I, how can I except some man should guide me? And he desired Philip that he would come up and sit with him. And the place of the scripture which he read was this. He was led as a sheep to the slaughter, and like a lamb dumb before the shearers. So he opened not his mouth. And his humil humil humiliation he judged was spoken away. Who shall declare this his generation? For his life is taken from earth. And the eunuch answered Philip and said, I pray thee, of whom speaketh thou the prophet this? of himself or some other man. Then Philip opened his mouth and began the same scripture and preached unto him Jesus. And as they went on their way, there came unto a certain water, and the eunuch said, See, here is water. What does hinder me to be baptized? And Philip said, If thou believe with all thy heart, thou mayest. And he answered and said, I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. And he commanded the chariot to stand still. And they went down both into the water, both Philip and the eunuch, and he baptized him. And when they were come up out of the water, the Spirit of the Lord caught away Philip, that the eunuch saw him no more, and he went on his way rejoicing. But Philip was found at Azotus, and passing through, he preached in all the cities till he came to Caesarea. Father, we bless you, we thank you, and we glorify you for your word today. Now, Father, anoint our mind, our ears, our heart, our eyes, that we may hear, see, understand, and perceive, Lord God, what your word has for us today. Bless everybody listening. Bless everybody here, Father. We thank you, and we give you praise for it. In Jesus' name, amen. Everybody say amen. amen. And put your hands together as Pastor Linda comes up and ministers the word of the Lord to us today. Amen. 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 Glory amen. to God. Amen. Everybody glad to be in the house of God tonight? Amen. You out there? Amen. You in here? Yes. <coughs> okay, well, today 
Well, tonight, the uh, pastor has asked me to speak on Acts chapter 8 and uh, give an overview of Acts chapter 8. So, here we go. We're going to give it a whiz. <laughs> this is my version for what I for what I got out of it, and um, hopefully y'all got the same thing or close to it, or maybe you have another version. Um, but um, anyway, is um, I would like to say for those that are out there, uh, go ahead and turn your Bibles to chapter 8, Acts chapter 8, if you're not already there. And um, I'm going to open up with uh, there's four players, we'll call them players, there's four people in this story that we're talking about. Uh, Pastor Ray just read it. Um, the four people that's in this story are, we call it a story, but in this letter, I should refer to it as a letter. It's a continued letter. And uh, it's Saul, which we know, uh, later will become Paul. And then uh, Philip, Simon, and the uh, Ethiopian official or eunuch. Um, however your Bible might refer to, I have several different versions, but that's the one I have. Um, so those are the four different parts that we will kind of go over tonight and we will discuss. Um, and I'm hoping that I'll get this all together. <laughs> okay. Uh, so Saul uh, being a persecutor, okay, at the beginning as we read, he's a persecutor. He's a person that um, agreed to putting Stephen for the past, for the continuation of the letter. Stephen got uh, stoned to death and everything, but uh, Saul, he agreed to it. Mm -hmm. You know, so we know that Saul had some issues there that he's going to have to overcome. <laughs> you know, and uh, and so and down the road he will. Yes. You know, later on in chapter nine, I think it is or ten there. He he does make some changes. He does have a he does have a change. Sometimes. Amen. But uh, and that you know, hey, that's good news for all of us. That's you right. know, yes. Yeah. Down the road, we're gonna have a new change somewhere, someplace. Mm -hmm. So um, anyway, so uh, Saul being that going uh, going into all Jerusalem persecuting, he went into the city persecuting all everyone in the church and their homes and and. Uh, he, he just, you know, he was just out there to, to kill everything that was worshiping God. Amen. You know, worshiping Christ. Mm -hmm. The new way. The mm -hmm. way. You know, mm -hmm. I think they had different versions here. The way, Christ, you know, Christian. Mm -hmm. Whatever, whatever, however you read it, that's how it was mm -hmm. at that time. So, but um, anyway, believing in Christ. So, um, and that's what Saul was out to do. And we, we see that at the beginning of the to chapter 8, but um, at this time, everything is condensed down to just Jerusalem. Mm -hmm. Okay? It hasn't spread out yet. Mm -hmm. You know, so everything is in Jerusalem. And uh, so we, uh, we see that. And then uh, I was going to make a little comment here that, you know, we see persecutions and, and uh, talking about this part right here where they stoned Stephen. He was the first Christian to be martyred. In, in the Christian time song period mm -hmm. of the Bible and um, but today we see so many we don't see them exactly all the time but we hear about them yes. all the time amen mm -hmm. you know so it is happening if it happened then it's happening today that's too right. that's right because you know there's so many different people out there like a Saul mm -hmm. you know that wants wants to persecute Christians they don't want us to get out because mm -hmm. mm -hmm. they're afraid we might take over Okay, mm -hmm. so but you know, and that's that's the story. That's what we want. We want to take over, mm -hmm. you know. And so, um, but I was realizing then. I thought, you know, I've never actually seen the persecution, mm -hmm. but I've heard about them. Yeah. You know, and some of those I've heard hasn't been very great. Mm -hmm. You know, some of them have. Some of them have been like Stephen. Mm -hmm. You know, stung. Some of them's been kill shot you know heads cut off whatever but the thing of it is you know today 
at least we do have that opportunity, that freedom to be able to worship Christ mm -hmm. and not be persecuted right now. Mm -hmm. Okay? So that's that's the given thing that God has given us, the opportunity to be able to be where we're mm -hmm. at today, to be able to do what he's called us to do. Mm -hmm. And later on in my uh, talk here, you will see that we'll have areas that we'll have to we'll have to address mm -hmm. in a way that um, it is um, it is for us mm -hmm. for for the people that are supposed to be Christians, okay, or, or believer or the way. So um, anyway, so we see that, and then uh, many as we see that in Jerusalem at this time, many were scattered. They were scattered everywhere, right? Because the, what's happening is that the people are being persecuted and everything, so they just scatter. Mm -hmm. And have you ever been like in a, well, I don't think you've been there, but maybe some of you have, is um, been in a place and they said, get down, mm -hmm. you know, guns are shooting off or something all the time, you know, mm -hmm. and then the people start scattering, yeah. you know, and so things start happening. Well, I thought this was very interesting to me when I was reading it. Um, that many scattered all, all parts of Israel and uh, they went all throughout Jerusalem because they were they were persecuting everybody in Jerusalem so they was leaving mm -hmm. okay I want y'all get this picture yeah. they were actually leaving mm -hmm. Jerusalem because you know down over in the past there that it talks about how Jesus wants all his disciples and, and all his apostles and to go out and spread the word. Come on. Yes, they stay in Jerusalem. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 He said, I want you to go. Mm -hmm. Go where? Yeah. You know, outside yeah. of where you're at. Mm -hmm. You know, because the word can only be spread, you know, yeah. just so far right, right there. So he wanted uh, wanted them to go out, mm -hmm. outside. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, sometimes I thought, I just saw a little flash. I just got it just now. Okay. A little flash is that. Sometimes we have we have things that we think, oh, I can't move out of this box, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. Right. But then something happens. <laughs> what happens? We yeah. scatter. We yeah. leave. You yeah. know. We we go out. Yeah. And so I think that's what happened in Jerusalem. Amen. You know. I think that this persecution, which took people to another level, mm -hmm. spread them out. So they were spreading the word. Amen. Okay? So he had followers, mm -hmm. and so that's what that's what I was seeing in, the, in this that he had followers, and you know he wanted Jesus wanted him to uh, spread the word. Mm -hmm. Okay, and then um, so he wanted them to spread out to the parts of Israel. So they did. They spread it out to Samaria and Judea and mm -hmm. and even parts of. Jerusalem that had not even been touched yet. Amen. So uh, we find that out in in, the, in this letter here, and then um, I see that uh, I was talking about the scattering, mm -hmm. but also talking about spreading the word. Come on. Okay. Mm -hmm. So he wanted them to spread the word, and at this time, <coughs> pretty quick soon, we're going to have another another person in this picture, mm -hmm. you know, and at that time would be Philip, mm -hmm. you know, that came, he was a, I believe he was a deacon, mm -hmm. a deacon, so and he was spreading the word, but uh, God had called him to do this, so, um, so spreading the word, that means that uh, the people were still alive, mm -hmm. and they were talking, yeah. and they were believing, yeah. and those that believed, those that were of the way, mm -hmm. they, were, they were still spreading the word. Amen. 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 They was not setting on the word. Mm -hmm. Out there, y'all ain't setting on the word. You need to spread it. Come on, so man. we need to spread the word. Yes. You know, we don't need to sit on it. Mm -hmm. We don't need to sit back here and let just rot mm -hmm. where we're at. Mm -hmm. you know, that we keep it for ourselves because it's not going to do no good. Mm -hmm. You know, we got to spread it out. Okay. And then the Lord guided Philip into Samaria. Mm -hmm. And when Philip went into Samaria, he proclaimed Christ and performed many miracles. And at this time, many other people were listening to Philip. Mm -hmm. And he received. Mm -hmm. He received the people in, and the people received from him. Mm -hmm. You know, a lot of times when we go out, 
sometimes people are not receiving because they're not hearing, they're not looking, they're not seeing what you see. But sometimes, you know, we we will not be received if we don't project mm -hmm. out the Word of God right. in the right direction. Mm -hmm. You know, sometimes there's got to be a, a receiving and a and a, a what is it, a sender and a receiver. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. So you know, and if we're the sender, hopefully the receiver will receive what we're sending. Amen. You know, mm -hmm. and and here too, I've seen that uh, Philip is spreading the word. Yeah. And there are some that's receiving. Uh -huh. And there are some that are not. Uh -huh. You know, and there's still some that believes in Simon. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. so uh, Simon the sorcerer. Uh -huh. you know? <laughs> so here he is, and and Philip's out there spreading mm -hmm. the word and and testifying about God and or testifying about Jesus and mm -hmm. His ministry right. and uh, what's going on at that time. Uh, Philip is Philip was doing what Jesus asked him. Now, all the followers to do. Here are some areas. Mm -hmm. Okay, get your first um, book and chapter I like to be read. I will, I will read. It's from Luke 12, 33. But I've got seven areas here I'm going to read through pretty quickly. Okay. Mm -hmm. And uh, one being sell, he expects uh, all the followers and disciples and whatever parts of ministry you're caught in. It says, uh, sell their goods and give to the poor. Mm -hmm. You know, so in, I think it's Luke 12, 33. Mm -hmm. He talks about um, selling their goods and leaving them behind. It's 12, 33. Mm -hmm. well, it says, I have a, a Holman Standard Version. Um, it reads, um, sell your possessions and give to the poor. Make many bags for yourself and won't grow old. Mm -hmm. um, and exhaustible treasure is there in heaven where no thief comes near and no moth destroys. So no matter what, you go ahead and sell your possessions because it's going to come back to you. Mm -hmm. You know, you won't have to worry. Mm -hmm. You know, it's going to come back to you. And so he's telling them, you know, sell everything you've got, give to the poor, don't worry about it, I'm taking care of you. Mm -hmm. Basically, the thing. And then Luke 18, 22, I'm not going to read these chat these books. Um, and then Acts 2, 45, and Acts 4, 34, talks about that. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to give you some ideas of what uh, Jesus told his followers to do. And then, number two, Leave their family, house, and lands. Mm -hmm. uh, go everywhere preaching the word. Mm -hmm. And uh, you can read that from Matthew 10, 37, and Acts 8, 1 through 4. Mm -hmm. But leaving your family, that means leaving, because I've called you to a ministry. Mm -hmm. So leaving that, mm -hmm. you know, and then come, and, and I, will, I will project you on out. And then um, number three, uh, make disciples and teach them to work and obey the word of Christ. Mm -hmm. uh, Matthew 28, 18. Let's go there. Mm -hmm. Matthew 28, 18. It's uh, coming from uh, the great commission that he left with them. Matthew 28, 16, is that what it said? 18. Okay, yeah. 1819. Mm -hmm. Okay, it's um then Jesus came near and said to them, All authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. And I want y'all to get the word all nations. Mm -hmm. Okay? It didn't say Jerusalem. It said all nations. Mm -hmm. So that's the one thing I want you to pick up right there. Mm -hmm. And then, number four, take up their cross and follow Christ, mm -hmm. which we get from Acts 4, 1 mm -hmm. Thessalonians 2. Um, you get that, but we know we need to take up our cross and mm -hmm. follow Him. Mm -hmm. Okay? We know that. Or we should know that. Um, 
Number five, rejoice in tribulation and persecution. Mm. And that is uh, from Matthew, let's go to Matthew 5, 11. Everybody says rejoice in persecution for real. <laughs> uh, yeah. What was okay. Again? Five, eleven, and twelve. Blessed are you when they insult you and persecute you and falsely say every kind of evil against you because of me. Be glad and rejoice. Mm -hmm. I don't think it's anything, anything about being sad yeah. and falling down somewhere. I think right. it says be glad and rejoice. Right. Because your reward is great uh -huh. in heaven. Yeah. For that is how <coughs> they persecuted the prophets who were before you. So there was many persecuted before us. Uh -huh. Okay? So many, many of them. Mm -hmm. So we should be glad and rejoicing. Amen. Okay? And then um, number six. Mm -hmm. Shake the dust off your feet yeah. and move. Yeah. When the men refuse to hear. Mm -hmm. So when they refuse to hear the word, mm -hmm. just say, okay, that's mm -hmm. fine. Mm -hmm. You know what? One day it'll come back to you, Saul. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know? So, yes. So if they refuse it, don't worry about it. Just right. go on. Right. You know? Because you know what? One day someone else is going to come by that's and feed them. Mm -hmm. Somebody it. else is going to come by and say the same word you did. And that comes from uh, Luke 9 5. Right. And Acts. 1351 it talks about that shake off the dust don't worry about it mm -hmm. go on you know you've said your part you did what you were supposed to do this is part of being a disciple mm -hmm. and then uh, number seven go about healing raising the dead and and uh, bearing uh, bearing the last fruits it says uh -huh. and then um, you get that from mark uh, 16 18 and acts 3 chapter 3 through chapter 16 mm -hmm. okay and then uh, we hear all about the healings we hear all about you know uh, we heard about Jesus raising the dead I mean you know so we know all these things are happening mm -hmm. so these these things are the signs and wonders that's following Philip mm -hmm. okay during the time that he's he's doing this so I want you to understand um, what Philip was doing he was doing exactly what Jesus had called Amen. him to do. Okay? Amen. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you know, I'm taking it from this version here, is that um, doing exactly what Jesus tells us to do. Mm -hmm. Sometimes, sometimes we get lost in what Jesus tells us to do. Amen. Sometimes we think we heard Jesus and it wasn't Jesus. Right. It might have been something else. Right. You know, it might have been another word. Mm -hmm. Or it might have been a delusion. Yeah. Or whatever. So we don't want a Simon in our life. That's right. Okay? We don't want Simon to take us away. Uh -huh. We want to stay in the way. Mm -hmm. You know, we want to stay where we're supposed to be at. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, so with all of that, with everything that Philip was doing, with all the great miracles that he had done, with all of the great healings and, and the teachings, and um, he had convinced the people in Samaria mm -hmm. that, you know what, he, God, is mm -hmm. better than Simon, mm -hmm. which they believe was God, mm -hmm. or did things of God. Yeah. So, but now, you know, the people have seen, this is real. Yeah. This. See, I don't, I think, this is my thoughts, okay? I think when they seen Simon doing his stuff, that they wanted something uh -huh. like that. They wasn't actually feeling mm -hmm. the Holy Spirit. You know, they were actually feeling what they needed. Mm -hmm. But when Philip came and gave the word, they actually felt mm -hmm. the Spirit of God. Mm -hmm. You know, so that's what, that's my thoughts. Uh -huh. But that's what I think. Um, so then, then we hear of the man of Simon mm -hmm. who practiced sorcery. Simon had made a big impression on the people, which I just said. Uh, Simon was the opposite of Philip. Mm -hmm. He was totally the opposite. Mm -hmm. And then um, some people believe that Simon had a great power of God, mm -hmm. but when they saw her, saw Philip and heard Philip, then they realized Simon has nothing. Mm -hmm. Okay, mm -hmm. Simon has nothing. But we see many, we see many that were fascinated with Philip, mm -hmm. 
and Philip is doing two things, and I hope you see this, but I call it like a twofold thing, is uh, he was preaching about the kingdom of God. Amen. Okay, that's one thing. And then he was preaching Jesus Christ being another thing. Okay, but what I mean, they're together, but what I'm saying is he was preaching two things, and you know what, the people were getting the two things. You know, because he was teaching them about the kingdom of God, but Jesus Christ being the head of the kingdom, you know. And so that that's what I was seeing mm -hmm. in there, is that when Philip was preaching that, then he was, um, he was um, you know, leading the people into saying there's more to this than just living in Samaria. There's more to this than you're just your regular little life. You know, there is something more. Amen. And it is the kingdom of God. Mm -hmm. yeah, the kingdom of God is is more, more than what your kingdom mm -hmm. is. You know, your kingdom has nothing, but the kingdom of God has everything you need. Amen. And so uh, that's what I was seeing in there. And, uh, and even even Simon believed. Mm -hmm. Can you believe that? That's even right. Simon believed. Yeah. You know, as we see, yeah. we think Simon believed, mm -hmm. and then. After seeing many signs and wonders, and was baptized, as many were that day, Simon believed even more. Mm -hmm. Okay, but Simon was believing for a reason. Mm -hmm. We're believing because we want the true way, the uh -huh. true, the truth. Uh -huh. You know, we want Christ in our heart. And Simon, I believe, was believing a different way. <laughs> he was thinking how he could make some money. Uh -huh. this deal, you uh -huh. know, uh -huh. and so and that's what some, you know, I'm going to say this, I, I'm not pointing fingers to nobody, but that's what happens sometimes out there, uh -huh. you know, sometimes people are doing things, they're selling something, they're selling a healing, or they're selling a, a prophecy, or they're selling something, uh -huh. but, hello, uh -huh. let's not be a Simon, yeah. okay, amen, let's be a Philip, uh -huh. okay, <laughs> amen, so, but, uh, we see that. We yeah. see that sometimes. Not all the time. Sometimes. Mm -hmm. I'm not saying there's bad ministries. I'm just saying sometimes some people sure. has, has ways of doing things. Mm -hmm. And that's what they see. Okay. Um, so let's think about this for a moment. The Samaritans received the message of Jesus, then were baptized, mm -hmm. but had not received the Holy Spirit. That's right. Okay. At that time, they had not received the Holy Spirit. And then I seen, I was reading, I had done a lot of study on this chapter for the last few days, but I was reading in different books of concordance and, and things. And I was trying to get, because I was trying to think about back at the day of Pentecost, you know, that they didn't get baptized first. Right. Okay. Mm -hmm. I mean, they got the Holy Spirit, you know. And so I was thinking, why are they getting baptized? And then, you know, something happened. So, but anyway, then when I was reading a concordance, evidently I wasn't the only one with that question. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I read into it a little bit. And then it says, um, could we be talking about two kinds of people? <coughs> Bless you. Bless you. Mm -hmm. Could we be talking about two kinds of people? Jews and Gentiles, mm -hmm. you know, um, at the day of Pentecost, the Jewish people, one had to repent, was repented, were baptized, and received the Holy Spirit, mm -hmm. okay, and here in Samaria, in, in Samaria that they were, uh, they had to believe, mm -hmm. and then they were baptized, mm -hmm. and then later we will find out that the apostles pray for them and lay hands on them mm -hmm. and then they receive the Holy Spirit mm -hmm. okay so there's there's levels of who got how that way and this way and you know mm -hmm. different areas so could it be the bridging or the crossing mm -hmm. the lines crossing together mm -hmm. could it be that that Judaism and Christianity was coming together mm -hmm. at that time it would be very obvious mm -hmm. that it would be and then uh, the unity of the church mm -hmm. 
and as we know that this is the beginning and the basis of, of the Christian church. Mm -hmm. And then, um, could it be that God sent the apostles to lay their hands on the Samaritans and express full fellowship with them? Because I think Jesus, now correct me if I'm wrong, but I think Jesus was the only one that ever went to Samaria, right? He met the Samaritan woman at the wall, <coughs> and because nobody else been there. Uh -huh. None of his apostles, no, nobody else had been there. So, could it be? I'm just putting on could it be. Okay, y'all figure it out. Y'all think about it. And, you know, I, I'm just throwing something out. Food for thought. Mm -hmm. That's the answer. Food for thought. Um, uh, they were all members of one body and all members of one crop one in Christ Jesus. Mm -hmm. That's what it really boils down to, that they all came together, they became one. Mm -hmm. It wasn't the Jews, it wasn't just the Samaritans, it wasn't like a, a church in Jerusalem and a church in Samaria, mm -hmm. they became one church. Mm -hmm. So that's the, that's the point here, mm -hmm. is that, you know, it could be Jews and Gentiles, mm -hmm. and Gentiles have to come a little bit more, Jews already has, you know, they're chosen, we're called. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So there's two, you know, two levels. Give me food for thought. Okay? Yeah. I could be throwing something out there mm -hmm. and I might be way off the block. Mm -hmm. But hey, mm -hmm. I think I'm close. Okay. All right. I'm gonna believe God I am. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um verse 14 through 25 is speaking of Simon mm -hmm. trying to buy God's power. Mm -hmm. We see Simon was truly not converted. Mm -hmm. He truly was not converted. Uh -huh. He just believed enough to maybe try to get in the door. Yeah. You know, he wanted he wanted to get his foot in the door and and break some ground there. Mm -hmm. You know, so that maybe he could learn how to get that power. Mm -hmm. You know, so um, we'll see. We'll see if he he can get that power. Amen. Uh, Peter answering, you know, Simon at that time. You know, when when uh, Peter realized what he was doing, Peter said said, uh, let me help you, brother, per se. I, I'm, just, I'm adding, okay? Yeah. Let me help you, brother. He says, uh, your money will perish with you, which we just read. But it goes on to say, uh, no believer will perish, John 3, 16. Mm -hmm. And then it says, you you have neither part nor portion of this matter. That's what he was telling Simon. Mm -hmm. And he was not of the fellowship that's what he was trying to tell him. He was not of the fellowship. Because you don't have a true heart. You've got to have a true heart. A true repentant heart. And that's what this is talking about. That your heart is not right in the sight of God. So you become like an unsaved person. Because you're trying to do something outside of the box. You know, outside of the way. So Simon asking Peter... You know, we see through here that he wants he wants Peter to be a mediator between him and God. After Peter told him all these things, you know, that might be happening to you or will be happening to you unless you get your heart right. You know, and so, um, but you know, there's one thing Peter Peter uh, was telling him is that you know what I'm telling you all this because you got to get yourself right. You know, he was trying to help him. He wasn't trying to put him down. He was trying to help him to see what he was doing. And what he was doing was wrong. Mm -hmm. And so what he was wanting him to do is come and see. Mm -hmm. And so um, so when Simon asked Peter, you know, uh, to go and be a, a mediator between him and God and all of that, and Simon was, was, uh, was just doing all of that to say, I don't want I don't want all this stuff coming back on me, mm -hmm. you know? And then then that's at the time when we realize that Simon was not sorry for his sins. Mm -hmm. He was not sorry at all. Mm -hmm. And repenting is a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. You know, it's not between you and so and so. It's between you and, and God. Mm -hmm. So that's something Simon missed. Mm -hmm. Okay? But, so Philip, <coughs> at that time, you know, he, he was the, uh, 
apostles came and laid hands on the people. I'm backing up a little bit. Laid hands on the people and they received the Holy Spirit. And, and uh, after they got saved and then they received the Holy Spirit. And now, you know, at this time, it's talking about that they're going out and spreading the word. So, then Philip was led to the desert near Gaza. Mm -hmm. Gaza is a real desert, y'all. Mm -hmm. it's, it's real desert. <laughs> Hot. Um, and God had another mission for him. See, God sometimes puts us in places and he has other missions for us. Mm -hmm. And we don't always understand our missions. But um, the disciples and the apostles, and all of them at that time realized, mm -hmm. you know what, we have, we have many missions. God has his own many missions. Mm -hmm. And we might not see all the missions. We might not be able to do all the missions. That's why he wants many disciples. He don't want one person trying to do it all. He's trying to get us all to do something, mm -hmm. you know. And so, and here we see that, you know, now he took Philip out of Samaria mm -hmm. and he's down. Mm -hmm. So, when you're being taken out of a place, mm -hmm. when God moves you from one place, he'll move you into another place for you to do a Amen. different work or maybe the same work or maybe a bigger work, Amen. you know. And, and we never know. We never know what we're called to do. But... The, th the thing of it is, is when we're moved and when we feel the Holy Spirit moving us, we need to be in tune. Mm -hmm. And see, and Philip was always in tune. That's something I, I realized through this whole chapter. Philip was always in tune mm -hmm. with God and the Holy Spirit. He was always in tune to know where he was supposed to be at and what he was doing. Mm -hmm. And um, so we seen that he moved to Gaza and that he had a mission there and that he was a um, he was helping another soul mm -hmm. to come to Christ. Mm -hmm. But he was helping him in a way to let him know that, you know, he heard him reading, but he realized he didn't understand what he was reading. Mm -hmm. You know, how many times have we been there? Mm -hmm. I read so many things, I think, Amen. I don't understand this. Uh, you know, mm -hmm. I'm sure I'm not the only one. So, but you know, I was thinking, oh no. I need someone to help me, you know, and I'm sure this poor guy here, you know, he was thinking, I need some help. This sounds good, but I don't know what it means, you know. <laughs> How many has been to church and said, it was a good word, I don't know what it said, you know, I don't know what it meant. So, but the thing of it is, is sometimes, you know, we can get people beside us and, and behind us and say, look, I'll, I'll help you, mm -hmm. I'll guide you. Right. And in this chapter, it talks a lot about, you know, where Philip was guiding people, teaching people, directing people. And see, and that's all a part about mm -hmm. ministry. Mm -hmm. And this is what was happening in this, this is what I see in this chapter. Mm -hmm. It might not be what you saw, but it's what I see. Mm -hmm. And uh, so Philip was directing and guiding and helping the Ethiopian official to understand what he was reading. And so, like I was saying, sometimes we have to have help. Amen. Amen. That's mm -hmm. right. Anybody in here needs more help? Amen. I always <laughs> Amen. You know. And um, so, understanding the Word of Christ, that's a big thing. Yeah. Understanding the Word, mm -hmm. you know, and, and, and interpreting it right, you know. And that's another thing that I've seen in here, too, is that, you know, when people... <coughs> And them came, Peter and the apostles came, and they were, they were talking uh, with the people and laying hands on them. Mm -hmm. and, and seeing that this big move came across Samaria, then they came down to, to bless it and to see it and to, you know, encourage. They were there to encourage the people. And so, and that's what happened. It, and then from there, it spread. Amen. Okay? It just kept on spreading. And that's what we want for our churches today. That's what we want for our people today. Yes. We want to keep on spreading. Yes. To finally we take over. Amen. Okay? Finally we take over. Mm -hmm. We've got too much out there taking over. We need to take over that. Yes. Like Pastor Ray was talking about, you know, 
in the 40 days of prayer mm -hmm. is that, you know, taking over the city, mm -hmm. taking over Kentucky. Mm -hmm. So, and that, or Hallelujah. taking over the United States. Amen. You know, so that way we as people of God, we need to take over mm -hmm. Lake Philip and then we will get moved over Amen. to another place. Amen. Okay? Amen. And y'all see that? Moved over to another place. <laughs> I don't know how Philip got there, but he moved yeah. over to another place. Yeah. But yeah, so we get we get moved up. But um, but the thing of it is, is um, it's a great it's a great chapter. Yeah. I don't know um, anything more that I I'm sure there's more to it. Mm -hmm. But I myself, this is what I got out of it. Too. Okay, That's right. mm -hmm. and I'm sure y'all have plenty more to get. Yeah. So I'm listening and ready for y'all's mm -hmm. uh, word on that. Mm -hmm. So. That's all I have in this chapter mm -hmm. tonight. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I hope everybody enjoyed that. Yes, Amen. Thank you. Glory Glory to God. God. Hallelujah. Come on, put your hands together for the Lord. Amen. Glory to Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Well, praise God. Um, again, we just want to thank God for uh, Pastor Linda and being obedient and breaking down the word of the Lord to us or giving us a, a good overview, a good start, a good foundation. Um, uh, as we explore more into the Word. And like she said, there's so much more in here, and we're going to yeah. pull more stuff out of here as we go along. Um, so we want to say uh, to our listening audience, uh, we want to thank you all for joining us today, and the Lord bless you and keep you and watch over you. And uh, join us Sunday morning um, for our Sunday morning service. So God bless you. <laughs> Love y'all, and we'll talk to you and see you soon. Amen? Amen. Amen. Amen.